Good morning, everybody. This is Kathleen McNary uh, with the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce. And thank you all for joining us today. I'm hoping you can hear me and possibly see a little bit of me in the, in the um, video chat. And let's see. Okay, so we are getting ready here. It is money talk time. Um, thank you guys all for being here today. I know this is um, one of the biggest issues for all of you, whether you're a business owner or employee, um, on figuring out how, how we can get money and what, what type of options are available and how we can um, start the application process. So um, a lot has changed even since we just planned this event um, last week. So uh, Ken Lewis, who is our speaker today, he is a lender relations specialist with the US, um, S the SBA in the San Diego district office here. And so I am gonna turn it over to you, Ken, to get us started. Um, and just a reminder to everybody, we will try our best to um, get, oh, can you guys hear me? Can I be, am I heard? Yes, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm getting some messages, they cannot hear me. Perfect, thank you guys. So um, we, depending on time, um, we may get to question, questions at the end here. So, but while we're going, feel free to type any questions you may have into the Zoom group chat. And then at the end, we will try to address as many as possible. Um, Ken, so you are in charge now. Please go ahead and take it away. All right. Hi, Kathy. Good morning. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Okay, apparently it's not allowing me to share my screen. Let me, let me get, where'd you go? All right, perfect. Can everybody see this? Kathleen? Let me see here. I'm gonna stop my share. Let's see. Ken, can you try sharing the PowerPoint again? I see your name. I just don't see the PowerPoint. There we go. Does that work? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being on the call with us today. Um, before I begin, uh, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Ken Lewis. I work for the Small Business Administration uh, out of the San Diego District Office. Um, my primary responsibility is to get lenders on board uh, to participate with our lending products and programs, especially the 7A and 504 program. Uh, this particular PowerPoint presentation we we're going to be presenting on is on the IDLE program, um, the Economic Injury uh, Disaster Loan Program. Uh, I do understand that you guys have a lot of questions regarding this particular program as well as additional programs that were apparently added to our list of programs that SBA have, uh, specifically on the PPP program, uh, which is, I believe, is a project payment program, as well as the CARE Act program that's supposed to be coming out. Um, as you guys are aware, uh, the Senate and the House, as well as the President, signed the bill on Friday, um, giving us authority with um, X amount of dollars to be able to support these programs. Uh, the, the tricky part is in regards to the PPP as well as the um, CARES Act program, um, unfortunately we don't have any information pertaining to those particular programs itself. Um, apparently SBA has been working on the policy uh, regarding those two programs. Uh, we should get more information on Friday regarding those two additional programs that were added uh, to the SBA. However, more information is to come out, uh, but specifically today we're going to be talking about the actual IDLE program. Um, keep in mind, SBA is changing everything on a daily basis. So this new system that we're going to be actually going to be going over today uh, is actually a new system that was just generated within the past 24 hours. Uh, so the PowerPoint presentation 
It's not as pretty as I want it to be. However, it has the basic information that you guys need to basically apply for the actual IDLE program itself. Um, we also want to keep in mind um, there is local, local assistance out there uh, through our Chamber of Commerce, our small business development centers, our score chapters, as well as our WBCs and VBOX. Uh, they are assisting clients at this time. If you are not comfortable with actually going through the application by yourself and you need somebody to basically walk you through it, uh, our resource partners are currently extending reach and saying, hey, if you guys need help, uh, let us know. Uh, these are our websites for the specific three partners that SBA work with. Um, so if you want to set up an appointment with one of them, you're more than welcome to. Please keep in mind that a majority of these resource partners are currently working from home. However, they are doing um, conference call meetings through webinar uh, to basically help the public and assisting the public with the application process. Uh, to submit your application, uh, we highly encourage small businesses owners to apply online as soon as possible. Uh, we request we will be looking at it based on a first come first serve basis. The biggest reason we've been getting or complaints that we've been getting regarding the application is it's not being filled out properly. Um, SBA actually created, like I said earlier, a new format on these applications, so it's really streamlined. Um, also, the biggest concern is uh, if more funds are needed. Applicants can submit supporting documents and request for an increase or a decrease in your loan amount. So once you submit your application, how it generally works is you submit your application. It used to take two to three weeks for the applications to actually be reviewed. However, being with this new system that just got up and running yesterday, I was hearing that it's taking about 48 to 72 hours to get a response. However, don't quote me. It's a new system. As you all know, with new systems, things happen, things crash. You know, so we'll see and we'll play it by ear as far as this new system is currently up um, for applications at this time. Uh, receiving updates. Um, as you are aware, uh, the idle, um, new programs that's coming out is the CARE Act as well as the uh, PPP uh, program. We highly recommend or encourage everyone if you want to receive information as soon as we get information what we normally do is send it out to our list of contacts which if you want to register for that you may do so going to sba.gov updates and we generally will send out information uh, to everyone that's located on those lists so if you want to get on the san diego's list highly encourage you to sign up for our updates all right moving on to the application process so being that we transitioned from the old system to the new system, um, SBA hasn't really created one central website for everything as we, did, as we did have before, but because the old system was basically crashing like literally every hour, SBA created a new application or a new database. Um, however, to get information is not as helpful as we want it to be. However, before an applicant can actually apply for the actual disaster loan, they have to determine if the disaster, um, if the loan is available in that specific disaster area. I can say today that all of California is qualified, so basically you can skip this this section. However, it's the website to for clients who are looking to submit paper documents or uh, submit uh, paper forms to the SBA. You can find it at disaster.gov, uh, apply for disaster loan, and it'll give you the information as far as what your needs are, what's, uh, what application we need to actually do the review process. Uh, however, that portal information is on the top of this page. The application process is in a different location. Once again, we're going to merge both these websites as soon as we get everything cleaned up. Um, however, this, the application process, is now located at covid19relief.sba.gov. Once again, this is a new application. It just came out yesterday around 10 a.m. Um, however, if you can't remember the website, you can always go to sba.gov and basically on the top bar, it will say apply for an idle loan program and click on that and it will take you to this website specifically. Uh, now this new webpage 
Uh, it is a new application, so we are still testing the system out as we speak. Now, this site will be your homepage for the application process only. The SBA has streamlined the process requirements for this new application process. Please keep in mind, if you do not submit all the information requested, your loan cannot fully process. Now, the applicant understands that the SBA is relying upon self-certifications, and we'll get to that page. Uh, so make sure you go through the self-certification uh, acknowledgement um, and making sure that all your information is right. Um, the highly, we highly encourage individuals to go through the application and fill out everything as much as possible. The only thing that's required on the form is where it's located, uh, where there's asterisks. Um, however, we are telling everyone, fill in every box. So that way, when the processor reviews the application, he or she identifies that you at least reviewed the question uh, to that current box and you addressed NA as far as not applicable if it doesn't apply to you or your business. Before you begin the program, you must uh, the eligibility entity verification. Um, it's going to come to a page where it's going to ask you to select one of these. Uh, if the applicant or your business does not more have more than 500 employees, uh, it asks if you're a sole proprietorship, uh, if you have employees, or if you don't have employees, uh, if you're an employee stock ownership plan, uh, if it's, you're a tribal, so on and so forth. It also asks you questions regarding uh, the SBA side standard requirements. As you may or may not know, in order to be eligible for SBA programs, there's a certain requirement as far as what we considered as a small business. Uh, that website that we applied on this page actually determines based on your next code. Uh, so next code, we determine if you're small in the government's eyes uh, based on the number of employees and the number um, your annual revenue. Uh, so if you do meet the qualifications, it will bring you to the next screen, um, asking you for information or disclosing eligible verifications. And now keep in mind, if applicant is unable to check all of the following applicants uh, and uh, all this information, your entity might be ineligible. However, we don't want to discourage you from applying. We are just indicating just to apply, see what happens. If the system tells you you're not eligible, then you can get on our customer service line. And we're currently changing that process as well uh, to talk to a representative. Um, this part asks you, uh, if applicant is not engaged in any legal activities, uh, no principal of the applicant with the 50% greater uh, has been delinquent on your child support, so on and so forth. So this is basically a very standard process. It's just going to ask you to check a few boxes if it all applies to you. If it doesn't apply to you, you can leave blank. But keep in mind specifically on these questions, it's asking you specific questions as far as eligibility goes. So before you even get into the application process, it starts off with these questions first. Once you get into the application, we're going to ask you for the business information. Um, we want to let you know that before the application process took about 45 minutes to an hour to do. With this particular format or this new website, we are we were told uh, that businesses took about 20 minutes to apply. So it's much quicker, it's much faster, it's much cleaner. Um, it's very basic information we're asking you for. If you're uncertain as far as the question goes, you can always ask one of our resource partners or even your Chamber of Commerce who can better assist you. Um, we're going to ask you for your legal name, your trade name. Uh, we've had questions in regards to that. Um, your business name is basically what you file your taxes under. If you're a sole proprietorship, it will probably be your name. Um, because you file under a sole proprietorship, which is under your social security number, under Schedule K. Uh, but if you're a cooperation, uh, you have a business legal name. The trade name is basically what's the name of your store or your business. So say, for instance, you're, if you're a Subway, right? Uh, but I'm going to do it under, you know, a sole proprietorship which or a cooperation, which my cooperation is maybe Kenneth Lewis Cooperation, but my actual trade name is Subway. So that's what a trade name is, is what you're doing business as. Uh, your EIN number um, or your social security number, if it is a sole proprietorship. Uh, the organization kind, uh, type, uh, is the applicant a nonprofit organization as well as uh, if you're uh, a franchise or not a franchise. 
Uh, as you are aware, the reason why we put that question is some nonprofit organizations do qualify for these loans. Uh, so this is why we wanted to make a very simpl simplified uh, process to, so where everyone can use just one application. Uh, we also ask you about your gross revenue. Uh, we do understand that a lot of you haven't filed your 2019 taxes. We are okay with that uh, because I believe the IRS is actually closed down currently uh, or they're not receiving any requests from us uh, regarding certain forms that we request through the IRS. But, I mean, just put in, notate your gross revenue. Uh, if you don't know your gross revenue, take a look at your, you know, ask your accountant to provide you the documents. Uh, also, your cost of goods sold. You know, if you're, 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 you're a storefront that sells goods, you really want to know that information. Now, if you don't sell any goods and you don't have any, you know, you're, it's zero because you don't sell any goods, put zero. Don't leave it blank. Uh, but you need to fill out that part. If it's asking for the amount, put zero. If it's asking for wording, put NA as far as not applicable. But we want to make sure that you're filling this out as fully as possible. Uh, the next information will ask you about uh, rental properties. Uh, we'll ask you about nonprofit costs and operational for the last 12 months. Uh, we'll ask you for annual operating expenses, a uh, list of the secure so uh, social service provided, uh, any faith-based entities, uh, compensation for other sources received as a result of the disaster. Um, like I said, it is, these questions are not required because it's not a requirement. It doesn't indicate that it has an asterisk next to it. However, if it doesn't apply to you, just put NA. Uh, it is, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, as an underwriter, we want to make sure that you at least acknowledge the question. Uh, if you leave it blank, sometimes we question if you've even seen that question in there. So if you put something in there, it's very helpful for the underwriter. Now, I do apologize. These PowerPoints look very basic. Um, there was no PowerPoint created, so this is basically an unofficial PowerPoint. <laughs> um, I just finished this about 10 minutes ago. It was just a matter of copying and paste the actual application. But once you go through the application, you see what the issues that I have. In order for us to move to the next screen, um, I had to put in some of the information, but um, this is what we currently have as of right now. Uh, additional business information, we're going to ask you for a brief description uh, regarding other compensation sources. So if you have other compensation sources, like say, for instance, your partner or your husband or your wife works, um, you might want to put that in there. If they don't work or they're not currently working, uh, you can also put zero. Um, as far as your description goes, and then you can explain yourself. You know, if you want to explain it to hear your side of the story, you're more than welcome to. Uh, we're going to ask for your primary business address. You know, the general information, your business phone number. We do understand that some of the businesses are closed. However, as you all know, we don't know how long this will last. Uh, so we want that information just in case, you know, we can't get a hold of you through your cell phone. Uh, we want all available phone numbers so that way, you know, once we go through the application process, we want to be able to reach someone. So having all the numbers available is very helpful for an underwriter. Um, additional information will ask you for alternative business phone numbers, faxes, emails. Like I indicated earlier, put as much information as you can in there. If you don't have a fax number, not a problem. Just put NA. Uh, business email address. Uh, sometimes you want to put your personal information in there too. Uh, business activities, detailed business activities, as well as the number of employees that you have as prior to the disaster occurring. So as you can see, these application process is very basic, very general. Uh, it's very easy to fill out. Um, however, if you do need questions, if you have questions, you're more than welcome to either reach out to our resource partners or you can reach out to our um, 1-800 number and we'll give you that information at the end. Uh, um, individuals who actually work on the program itself. Um, this part will be the business information, owner's information. Um, if you are the actual owner, it's going to go through your personal information, like your mobile phone number, your title of the company. Uh, is your business owned by a business entity? Uh, that's required if you have another business, which is considered like an affiliate. Uh, if you do, hit yes, and then move forward. It's going to ask you for your owner's percentage. 
Now, SB has required you to list all the owners in the application. So if you have your son or daughter have 5% of the business, we're going to see a total, we need to see a total of 100% of the ownership. So if you have 50%, your wife has 45%, and your daughter has 5%, we're going to need three individuals' information under the business owner information. Um, so it's very basic, basic, and, you know, basic and straightforward. Your date of birth, social security number, the email address, uh, your owner percentage. It's going to ask for your personal resident information. And then on the bottom of that page, it's going to add you if you want to add additional owners in there. If there is one uh, there is additional owners, just click on the box, and the same information will pop up uh, for you to actually, or your, the, uh, the second business owner should be able to fill out as well. If you have their information, you're more than welcome to put that information in there. Uh, but please make sure if you're using other people's information that they are aware of that. Uh, they are aware that you're putting that information in here. Uh, some of the general questions that we require, uh, we require, you know, if there was any, if you ever been arrested, uh, it's a yes or no question. Uh, if you do answer yes, there's going to be another uh, section that's going to pop up. It's going to ask, you know, what you're arrested for. Uh, it's going to ask for the detailed court documents. And it's just going to basically ask if, you know, everything is complete. You just say yes or no. Uh, it's, the second question is, is the applicant or any listed owner currently suspended or debarred from contracting with the federal government? Uh, if it does apply to you, say yes. If it doesn't, you can just hit no and continue. Um, and then it'll go through general questions. Uh, if, you were, if you're currently under indictment on parole or, or currently on violation. So if you are unaware how to answer these questions, I encourage you to reach out to your resource partners. Uh, the additional information, and we're coming towards the end. This is how quick and fast it is. Uh, this is the third section, which is asking for additional information. Uh, it asks if any, uh, anyone assisted you in completing this application. Please be aware, this application process is very easy. Be aware of any scammers out there. There's a lot of scammers out there uh, saying things like, hey, um, if you want us to fill out your application for you, We'll charge you fifty dollars, you know, fifty dollars to apply. SBA's loan idle program, it's free of charge. So if anybody's charging you, it's a scam. So just be aware, there's a lot of scammers out there, and we and we wish we could help you guys in that matter, but we just, you know, highly encourage you guys to just be aware. This application process is free. The loan is free. You're knowing no obligation to accept this loan. If we were to apply, uh, if you were to apply, and if we were to review your application, you still have a choice up until prior to you signing the documents to decline this loan if you want to. It doesn't cost you anything. However, if there's people out there charging you for this service, you might want to rethink that because it could be a scam. So just be aware. However, if there is somebody like an accountant or your attorney that do help you fill out this information, you know you need to put in that information in there. Uh, just list, you know, who the individual party is, what company they work for, you know, if they charge you any fees. Um, the second part of this is, or it's on the bottom, it's going to ask you if you would like to be considered for an advance of up to $10,000. How do I encourage you to apply for it? Um, I've been hearing a lot of rumors regarding this $10,000. Um, as far as right now, as I indicated, I, it, this could be, uh, the one that uh, it forgives you, where I think SBA is just giving away $10,000 to business owners, I am not certain. Like I said, the new policies and new rules regarding that you know, IO program, it is still coming out. They're rolling it out. But as soon as we get more information on that, we'll give it to everyone. Um, however, for just, you know, to apply for it, just hit the checkbox. Uh, because I believe it's part of where... SBA is indicating that if you don't qualify or if you do qualify for this loan, you're still going to get that $10,000. However, once your application goes through and your processor will actually take a look at it, he or she will determine and you can decline it at that time if you choose to. But like I said, we'll get more information on that specific question. Uh, like I said, this application process just came out within the past 24 hours. 
Uh, where to send the funds to? If you want that $10,000 up front, we're going to need your bank name, your account name, uh, number, your routing information. So just be aware, if anybody else is asking for this information outside of the SBA's website, it could be a scam. So just be aware, guys. Um, however, majority of the application, actually the whole entire application is on the SBA website. Uh, it shouldn't divert you to another web link. However, if it does, let us know as soon as possible. Uh, but everything or your application or your information should be only stored in SBA's database. And the ending part of this is your certification. You're just certifying that everything on this application is true, and you do acknowledge on the second part of the certification, which is on the bottom. Uh, and then once you have completed that part, it takes you to the summary. The summary page will list every single response that you had. Um, <clears throat> regarding the IDLE program, um, it's going to ask you if you want to put in additional information in there. Uh, so it's going to give you an opportunity because, as you know, you already certified that everything's correct. But it's going to give you an opportunity to go through the application and make any changes that you do need to make uh, one last time before you submit. Um, once again, this is a new online portal. for It's at covid19relief.sba.gov. However, if you want to submit a paper application, we highly encourage you uh, to submit through regular mail. And you can, once you've completed all the documents, uh, you can submit it to USA, uh, SBA, uh, out in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, once again, if you do have any questions or concerns, if you do need that handhelding assistance, you're more than welcome to reach out to your Chamber of Commerce's, uh, your small business development centers, uh, your women business centers, your veteran outreach business centers, as well as um, our women business centers. Um, but if you want to speak to a representative, uh, that is controlling the IDO program, uh, we highly encourage you to reach out to the disaster line, which is at 1-800-659-2955. Um, we did get a lot of uh, responses indicating that it's been taking people two hours to get to someone. Uh, help is on its way. Uh, we just hired, I think they hired like 2,000 or 3,000 people uh, that will be working around the clock, about 24 hours around the clock. So that should be activated within the next couple of days. We're hoping by Friday, but at the latest, it will probably be Monday that people will be activated to start accepting calls. So it will be a lot quicker for you guys. And once again, we want to thank everyone for being patient in this time of need. Uh, and we do apologize that you guys are going through all this. But if you want to go ahead and send your emails, uh, questions to Disaster Customer Service at SBA.gov, you're more than welcome to. Uh, we highly encourage you if you're – if you're doing that and you're not getting a response within 72 hours, let us know. Call us at the district office. We'll see what's going on. But, you know, help is on its way. Uh, we are putting people in place to assist us in this time. Uh, but other than that, Kathy, that's all I have. I guess we can open it up for questions and, you know, get everyone's questions answered at this time. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much, Ken. It is, it's a lot of information. And like we've been saying every day, it changes by the minute. Um, I do thank you too. And I want to reiterate also your point about being careful, um, you know, and, and, and looking at things very carefully when people are asking you for information and because there is a lot of scam and virtual crime happening there. It's like they all are ramping up their operations, um, especially because everybody's working remotely and um, tend to have less internet security. Um, so along with anything with the SBA, um, be extremely careful, but also with emails, be careful about opening any attachments um, from anybody you are not expecting something from. Um, so Ken, if we can just get into answering a few questions, I think that would be great. Um, one, which also is a fraud related question here, is I already applied, but I'm getting follow-up emails asking for bank accounts to receive the $10,000 advance. Is there an advance option or is this fraud? I know that there is an advance option, but would they follow up with the SBA follow up with you um, after you've already submitted your application to ask that? 
So from what we just got emails on this morning is our disaster. See, this is the scary part, but I'm going to just say it like how it is. Um, we did send out an email uh, indicating uh, or acknowledging if you want to receive that $10,000. Um, however, I would double check the actual uh, where you're actually receiving the email. Um, if it's sba.gov, now make sure it's GOV, um, then yes, it was an email from us. I think was just sent out this morning uh, indicating uh, clients that if they want to opt in to that 10,000 uh, emergency relief fund, you're more than welcome to request for it. And yes, we're going to need your bank information so we can put in those funds as soon as possible. As you are aware, the funds were just approved on Friday, so we have the money. Um, so we just need to ship it out to a bank. But if you're very cautious about it, you're more than welcome to reach out to the customer service line. Um, they haven't said of a, a second option as far as uh, maybe calling in and putting in that information. However, they're indicate, they did indicate that they sent out an email to all applicants at this time. But if you're going to respond to them, please make sure that it's an SBA.GOV email address. Does that makes sense, Kathleen? Yeah, that definitely makes sense. So it's possible um, and likely that if you did apply, you did get an email and um, following up about the $10,000 advance. But yeah, like you said, just really look at every single period letter and everything in an email address that's coming to you to make sure it is um, the, the appropriate party. Um, yeah, and if you, just, if you still feel uncomfortable responding, we totally understand. If you want, you can forward it over to our San Diego mailbox, uh, which is uh, say, hey, San Diego District Office, can you confirm that this is a true email? Uh, and just send it to San Diego at sva.gov and someone will get back to you in regards to how to follow or how to proceed with that. Okay, great. That makes sense and a great, great warning for us, everybody. Um, okay, so another question here. To qualify for the SBA loan, do you have um, to have to have a minimum of employees, a minimum number of employees on a W-2? I have three employees on W-2. Would I qualify? Yeah, I mean, you can have zero employees. You can be the only employee in the business. You still right. might be able to qualify. But I think what your, your question is pertaining to is this additional program that's coming out. It's really driven to businesses that kept their employees in place. However, as soon as you get more information regarding that PPPP plan, as well as the Act, uh, CARE Act plan, we'll get you guys information about that. But for now, we don't have any details on it. Uh, our agency did indicate that more information is soon to come on Friday. Uh, so as soon as we get the information, We'll share it with our community list. If you go to sba.gov uh, slash updates, we'll send it to that list of members that's on it, and then we'll let you guys know the details on it. But as far as applying for this particular IDO program, if there's no requirements, however, if you're a big cooperation that has 500 employees, then that might be a big issue. Um, but however, if you're just talking about less than 500 employees, it doesn't consider you ineligible or eligible. Um, you can have no employees and you just be the employee of the business and you're still qualified for these loans. Perfect. Yeah. And, and to your point too, about how it's all changing that word all over the place is that we should have updated information and um, how the, everything will work with that CARES Act and all the additional relief funds this Friday. And so the chamber also will be getting that out to our entire database and up on the website, social media, everywhere as soon as it's available. So um, stay tuned and we will have several more webinars. Um, and, and also just a reminder, this is being recorded. So we will be posting the recording of this up on our website um, as soon as it's available, which will be likely later this afternoon. Um, okay, so let's get to a couple more. Okay, how do you edit or update an application that has already been submitted? Is that possible, Ken? Unfortunately, it is not possible. Um, however, there was an email that was sent out anyways. If you, if you sent um, your loan request to SBA uh, with the old uh, website, 
they're encouraging individuals to reapply for this new website. Uh, so I guess you'll have a chance to make an update or make an edit uh, because they're encouraging everyone to basically reapply again. Uh, so basically reapply again, go to that new web link, uh, reapply, put in the proper information. But as far as your old application, um, unfortunately, once you submitted and once you got an application number, there was no way to go back into the application itself. Perfect. Okay. Sorting through some of these questions. Some are duplicates. Thank you to, to those of you too who have been helping out answering some of the questions in the chat. I do see John O'Reilly, you did that several places. So thank you. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. <laughs> let's see. Okay, let's try this. For for a nonprofit corporation, there is no owner. Filled out the application with the name of the COO of the corporation. Was that correct? Do you, do you have an answer on something that specific, Ken? Or should um, we direct? I would them? just say no. I mean, just to. I would say to call the 1-800-9 to double check on that. Um, we, I, we have been getting some questions regarding that particular uh, type of business. Um, however, we've been referring them over to the 1-800 um, line. So in regards to specific, in regards to that particular question, reach out to our disaster assistance center. They might be able to better assist you in regards to that question. Okay, perfect. Um, and then if somebody, we may have addressed this, but we have a question. I filled this out yesterday. I did not check the $10,000 box. Can you revise it, which I don't believe we can, or should you submit a new application? Well, if you already submitted the new application, just to wait to an actual person contact you, uh, like I indicated, they're going to go through the application with you. Uh, there is going to be a chance where you might be able to make you know any updates with an actual loan officer that's reviewing your application. Um, however, if you want to try to go back into the system currently, um, I don't think there's a way at this time. Okay. And from more of a high level, I know we've been getting a lot of these questions and I've been hearing um, from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce who did a big webinar on, on the CARES Act last Friday that um, the way this disaster uh, relief loans through the SBA can work in conjunction with the care um, loans so that basically the, the advice we've heard, and correct me though, Ken, if I'm wrong, is that people should apply and apply for both, keep furious records on how they spend the money once they get it, and most of that, should, as long as it's being used for payroll, business expenses, a lot of that should be forgiven. Um, do you, is that accurate that it, it's a good recommendation to apply for this and then and not wait to hear how CARES is gonna work uh, for Friday? Like we want people to apply for this now, correct? Uh, yeah, we are encouraging everybody to apply for this particular loan. Um, as I indicated, I don't have any, you know, I don't even have a guide on this program, the new CARES Act or the uh, protection uh, payment program that's coming out. Um, however, from what I've gathered, and this is just through um, chats uh, from other district offices, um, the way they're going to make the program available now, you don't disqualify yourself from applying from one program versus the other program. Um, I think how it's going to disqualify you is how you're using your, your proceeds. Um, I think they were saying that one of the programs is going to give you a grant opportunity uh, if you are going to be paying your employees. Um, however, this is where the tricky part is going to be. If you're going to use the IDLE program to do the same similar action, please make sure you're not paying the same employee for the same amount of money for the diff two different programs. So just identify where you're actually giving the money to, uh, and you should be good to go. Um, there's not gonna be a restriction as far as not allowing you to apply for multiple programs. However, from what I gathered, we are gonna restrict how you use the proceeds. So if you're using one loan to pay for payroll and you're using this idle loan program to pay your monthly expenses, you're gonna be fine to do that. But if you're paying both to payroll, there might be a concern in regards to that. 
Perfect. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And that that's how I was understanding it as well. So I hope that um, is helpful to to you guys. Um, okay, I have another detailed question here. If I'm working with our company's bankers, do I need to go to the SBA website or do, and do this? Or can I simply work with them? So can you apply for this loan then through your company's bankers or do the business owners need to do it directly? Sounds like. So this particular IDA loan program is only through SBA's portal. However, there is another program coming out where banks will be, um, I think I know what the answer in this question is. Okay. So I believe the CARES Act or the PPP program will be applying through banks. I think that's how it's going to work. However, like I said, I don't have any information in regards to this, but just speaking on this particular loan program, the IDA program, these programs only can be applied to the SBA website. I hope that helps. Yeah, absolutely, Ken, it does. And um, I'm also going to put a link into the chat because the um, webinar that I was talking about um, through the U.S. Chamber of Commerce from last week did a really fantastic job of kind of painting the picture for us to understand how the CARES Act is going to work and intended to work and who's going to be you know where you can get the money from and how the SBA ones are working also so I'll include that link here in just a minute in the chat um, let me get another question first um, so for the fax number I saw people asking that question if you didn't have a fax you just put in NA into the application field um, Um, okay, a lot of these are duplicate questions. Okay, this is an interesting question. For the $10,000 cash advance, do we get a chance to review and accept the terms of the loan before the cash is deposited? So I think maybe what happens exactly after you hit apply and yes, you want the cash advance, do you get a notice that it's coming and you approve it or how does that work? I think you get a notice that it's coming and it's just probably going to direct deposit into your bank account. Um, we don't have any information pertaining to that. The reason being is the bill was just passed on Friday and um, this application process just came out yesterday. So I don't believe they're sending out any checks currently. Um, however, as far as making sure that you are aware that it's going into your bank account, from what I understand and gather, this new portal or this new web page it's supposed to be able to contact individuals uh, regarding every action that's occurring. However, like I said, it is a new system, so we're trying to figure that out as it goes along. Okay. Oops. Resend that. Okay, I just sent um, in the chat field the um, link to that webinar I was just talking about. Um, See. Just kind of a specific question. Um, in the application, which category under business activity should engineering services fall under? Is that a call that phone number question? Engineering activity, as far as the description of the business? Yes. You'll just probably put engineering activities. <laughs> okay. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, I don't think that was a requirement. It didn't have a, a, an asterisk next to it. However, just don't leave it blank. Just put something in there. And then, like I said, the, the loan officer will actually review it with you. And if you do need to make changes at that time, you're more than welcome to let them know. Okay. Let me see. It is hard to sort through some of these questions um somebody said that they applied but didn't get an email do you get an email automatically when you hit apply and submit it yeah, so from what i heard from the new system i know the old system it did not you did not receive anything um however they indicated the new system is supposed to generate you an email keep in mind this is a brand new system so we'll probably hear about the flaws uh, probably sometime next week, but 
to answer the question. Uh, they it did indicate that it's supposed to send you an email on any action it's currently taking on your application. Okay. So, okay. A lot of this, oh, sorry, there is a helicopter going on outside. <laughs> Um, okay, here's a good question um, outside of the um, CARES Act PPP information. Um, will 1099 employees be covered in the payroll SBA loan? So would that count as staff on uh, for this loan? 1099 employees? Um, I think they're talking about the PPP program on the CARES okay. Act program that's coming out. As I indicated, I don't have any information regarding those programs. Um, however, I was told that the IDLE program that we just covered uh, should be able to cover real estate agents, which I believe they're 1099s as well. Um, so I don't want to say don't apply for it if you're a 1099 employee. I'm saying apply for it. At the end of the day, it doesn't cost you anything to apply. But at the end of the day, the worst we can tell you is, no, you don't qualify for it. But we have to give you an explanation as to why. Um, however, like I indicated, there is some notes that I did review that indicated that real estate agents do qualify for these loan programs. Uh, so if you're 1099, go for it. Um, like I said, the worst thing we can tell you is no. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay, awesome. Thank you, Ken. I think... Um, I think we've gotten to as many questions as we can do at the moment. Um, we do have a lot of inquiries about when the next um, webinar and information about the um, additional relief funds and applications for those will, will be happening. So we are planning on Friday to be able to release information and more details on how to take advantage of those. Um, but again, just to reiterate that the, the recommendation is you you apply for this loan, keep track and, and, you know, furious records of how you use it if you get money and um, and it, there is crossover. So stay tuned. I know that's not everybody's exact happy <laughs> ending to it, but um, Ken, this has been extremely helpful. And I know a lot of people are like, this application already looks completely different than the one that we had over the weekend. So um, like you were saying, it just was updated. And um, so thank you very much, Ken, for being here. Everybody, please stay tuned for the recording. And um, we will be sending out information on upcoming webinars related to this um, as soon as possible. Um, and then just a quick reminder too, we do have another webinar today at 2 p.m. specifically focused on um, tax code. So that has changed a lot and there are a lot of ways that it will affect individuals, businesses, um, and even retired folks So or retired retirement planning. Um, so if you're interested in that, the information is also on our website to join at carlsbad.org. Um, that's at 2 p.m. today, same sort of format as this. And um, if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us directly. Um, thank you so much, Ken. We appreciate your help. I think everyone's applauding. No problem. I'll just go like that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your afternoon.